how did you get your name? Uh, it's a very funny name. And, uh, you know, and not in a pejorative sense, I think. Uh, funny in a, you know, kind of like, let's celebrate and enjoy it together kind of way. So I remember uh, I was at 4605 one time. It's an old club in uh, East London. And I was uh, filling in doing some jazz stuff. And I used to do that to make a couple quid, you know. And one night I'm just sitting there. I got there before the guys did. And I'm just sitting there eating. I got you know, fish and chips. And uh, I got my fish. And there's a, a piece of newspaper that was inside the fish. It wasn't on the outside, because, you know, as a Briton, we get used to that, and there's a certain level of acceptance of a little ink, you know, a headline or two getting on your fish. But this, the newspaper was literally inside the fish, and the guys, they come in, they see me, they say, Sting, why are you dissecting your fish? Well, they didn't call me Sting then, they called me Gordon. I said, Gordon, why are you dissecting your fish? It could have been the Gordon fisherman, right? And they were like, get a load of a sweater, black and yellow, let's call them Sting, because of the stripes. Sting! You know, if it was any other day, I don't think they would have noticed the sweater I was wearing. It was a little bit chilly that day. I remember it was November. It was just around that time where it's like, you know, the weather is it's kind of vacillating back and forth between, like, lukewarm and cold. And you just, you don't know. So I just, I, and I put my sweater on because in the pub it was a bit chilly. And uh, the, we don't have heat the same way you guys here. You know, you walk into a sports bar here and you can expect it to be nice and cozy, but not so much in England. Anyways, um, but now I'm just sitting there and um, I, I think... I don't know why that day I decided to wear the sweater, but I did, whatever, I didn't think about it, and if it was a blue and white sweater, what would have my nickname been, you know, Papa Smurf or something, I don't know, but, you know, I just happened to be wearing, you know, when they see me, these guys walk in, and two of these guys I've not met before, and they see me, I'm literally dissecting a fish, right, right before their very eyes, to try to get all the newspapers out, I don't mind the little bones, but, you know, like I said, can't deal with the paper in there. Now, with theater, you know, and that my son does theater, actually, he's in a streetcar named Desire, they said he was too... Too young for the young parts, or rather, wait, too old, too old for the kid parts, and too young for the... You know, this whole thing is really confusing, Clark. I can't tell if you're brilliant and you're fucking with me, or if you're a complete imbecile. Uh, I'm not a theater buff, but, uh, uh, and I know that there's uh, different accolades, and it seems like you guys got some attention. Did you win a, a Tony Award or anything like that? I had to play a fishwife, a shoeshine boy, and a cobbler. And this is all on two hours of sleep. And the thing was, I did not write those characters. Those characters were made when I was actually overseas working on the new album with Shaggy, which is what I'd, I'd rather talk about. Uh, I'll tell you this thing. For my money, my favorite thing when I watch an interview is I don't want to hear about the new book or the new gizmo, the thing that they're pushing. I want to know about the juicy stuff, you know, the, what makes us relate to you, uh, what makes you human. I feel like... We've really shared a lot of that, and, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, we don't really need to talk about the new album. You know, that's the fun part. Well, the people from Baltimore are going to be confused because I just spent the past 20 minutes talking about bumblebees and fish. I have a new album coming out, mate, and all they're going to know is about fish and bees. All right, goodbye. For fuck's sakes. All right, son of a...